Okay, so uh, oh, my name is Mauro. I work for uh, at Ten X, and we don't do closure there, but but I'm a closure enthusiast, and I worked with closure before in two or three other companies. And well, today we're gonna talk about Onyx, which is a, a platform, a library platform for for distributed computing, and also it. it Oh, it organizes our code and, and orchestrates the computation in a nice way, even without distributing. Uh, has anybody used o Onyx? Has anybody heard of Onyx? I know. So, some people have heard of Onyx. Nobody actually installed. OK, good. So this is the, the home page. So o Onyx uh, can integrate and consume and produce uh, data from uh, many many sources, many other uh, systems. So it can integrate with Kafka, Datomic, uh, SQL databases, uh, Elasticsearch. They have all these plugins uh, prepared, uh, and so it's easy to integrate with them. They also integrate with Core Async, which is something we, we're going to use today. Uh, here in the user uh, the user guide, they have some concepts. I won't go over all of them, but I think it's it's interesting to see what what they mean. So they have a, a computation graph representing all that all the processing that your your system is going to perform, and it's just a closure data structure. So if I have something like this, this represents the the, the edges of the graph. So uh, a, a new uh, a new information will come to uh, to in and it will move to increment and then from increment to out. So this is the graph. It's just uh, two consecutive edges. If you have something more interesting, it comes from this input and goes to two other uh, streams. So it can come from input and go to processing one and two, and from each of those it goes to some different output. So input and output could be uh, a Kafka queue or our Datomic database, all of those things that we saw in the, the, the other page here. It has some similarities with Datomic. I don't know if anybody has used Datomic here. So you can install some uh, functions. Uh, again, ev everything you install is just closure data structures. Just like in Datomic, you install the attributes, the entities with uh, data structures. You have these flow conditions to to decide if if the computation will stop in some node of the graph, or if it, if it will traverse an edge or not. You have all these primitives, uh, function that will be performed for every edge that the, the computation traverses. Uh, life cycle, which is, uh, you can specify some functions that will be called when the computation starts, when the computation uh, terminates, when it, it throws an exception, for example. It has uh, these uh, windows, uh, particular time windows, which we're not going to use today, but they are pretty cool. You can specify user sessions. So if a user uh, does not arrive in, in the next five minutes, then it's, it's considered the end of the session. Uh, so all the other, so Onyx can aggregate all the events in, in, in sessions, like in user sessions the user interacting. For example, if the user is using a, a, a phone app and producing events to a, to a server, in the server you can, uh, uh, you can aggregate all those events into a single session if those events are, 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 are consecutive, like if they, they arrived in, in a short period of time. So it's easier to, to process and analyze. Well, th let's let's show the code. 
So I have already opened the, the repo here, and I've connected to it. Can you read the text? No. no. Scale up font, I think that's it. Yeah. Can you read now? It's better. Okay, so uh, here we, we define the computation graph uh, as we saw on the, on the website. Can we make it frighteningly big, the font? Hmm? Make it bigger? Please. Sure. Like this? Ah, you want, you want the frame to be bigger? Is it okay now? Okay. So here we we define the, the computation graph. So uh, the, the workflow will, will be this it, uh, to start with in. Uh, yeah, so let, first I have to explain what we're uh, trying to do here. It is a, a small uh, project that I made on, by myself. Uh, it's the, a classic example of a uh, bank account. So we are processing withdrawals and deposits but this can be done on, in, with Onyx, so I wanted. So it's not a. The, the project's not different from what, something that you have already seen, but it's done in Onyx, so I think it's interesting to compare instead of showing you some totally different project that you have nothing to compare against. So the computation starts with in. And in this case, we are going to to consume from a uh, core sync, but it could be a, ca a Kafka channel. But we will see it later. And we go to this uh, router that will decide if it's uh, what what, uh, what kind of operation it is. If it's a deposit withdrawal, we're going to write to a database. In this case, Datomic. And also from the router, it could either write to the database if it's a valid operation, or, or it could uh, write the error, so process the error if it's invalid. And if it's an, an error, we are going to persist in the database, but in a different uh, different entity. So we can have all the, the log of all the errors that, that occurred. And uh, after, so after after it goes to error handling, it, it will either be written to the d database, and and it will also uh, go to the output. So from one one node in the computation graph, we can go to to different edges here. Okay, so in, in this case, I'm not using life cycles, windows, triggers, catalog. It, there's like much much more that we can do with Onyx. So we start with the, with the base job and we add the, the tasks. Uh, since we are using core async as a, the input, we can, we can specify the. So, so we create a, 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 a new core async task and add it to the base job. And we do this for all the tasks. These other tasks are, are defined here. Okay. Oops, just okay. um, oh, what, what else? When it goes to the router task, it's actually a, a, a multi method. And depending on the segment, so a segment is, is one message that goes to Onyx, and Onyx will decide what to do based on that segment. So it's basically a, a, it's a data structure, a, a closure map that has a, an ID, and, and that's pretty much it, and, and some data that will be computed. 
So when it gets to the, the router function, it will be, uh, we will decide depending on the type of, of the message, if it's a, uh, a new person, a new uh, people have accounts and the account can have those operations that I, I said. So when we are creating a person, it will run he, he, uh, here. We can create accounts, we can deposit, withdraw, and we return the transaction that will be performed. The functions in, in Onyx are, can be defined this way. So I, here I create simple uh, closure functions for each of those operations. So we can the same thing, create person, create account. And the, the, these are the functions that will be called by, by the tasks. Uh, and we, we check for errors. And we return the data structure. So we either re return a new entity. So uh, yeah, either re return the, the person here or the error. Uh, whatever we return will be persisted in the atomic. Yeah, uh, I, I do this pattern for all the, the operations, so we always return the error. And well, as you can see, they are very similar to the other operations. It's, it's pretty easy to, to implement. So here is wh where it starts uh, running. So in this, you can see the line 95. Are, we are uh, putting a, a new new information in, into a query sync channel that will be picked up by by Onyx. Yeah, the the, the rest of this function is not so so nice, but. So this part is the important part. We produce segments from the, the, the messages we want to process, which is, yeah, for, so for each segment, we produce the, the message. Oh, this is... So let's see it, it running uh, to understand what I'm talking about. Just a second. Right, so the, the messages we're going to process are simply these things. So every message has an ID and the, the operation, uh, either message withdraw with amount or deposit with amount or the account that we are creating with all the uh, the other information, or uh, and, and here I'm using a simple uh, account template to to create an account with a balance and the person that owns the account. So let's run this test to to see what happens when we create a duplicate person. So. Or actually, mm. no, I think the other one is better. Just a second. Yeah, run this one. So here we're running a, a test that, to check that we cannot create uh, duplicate accounts. 
So two accounts with the same ID, basically. Uh, first, we instantiate the job with some settings. Uh, then we, we create a, a person from a template and we send the, the message. With, with the, we create the segment uh, from the message and send it to Onyx. Then Onyx will, will pick up this segment and, and run the function submit job that we, we saw now. So it will, will come here and and run uh, and put, put some more data around it and put it into a query sync queue or channel. After producing the, the message to the channel, it will It will create an account for that person from the DB. So it will fetch the, the person from the DB, create the account, create the segments, which is how Onyx, what Onyx reads, and submit, submit the new job. Then we create the, the, new, the new account. After that, we try to create the same account again. And here we expect to see uh, an error because we're creating a second account with the same ID. And and the, the error is, is consuming from the, the, error, uh, the error task. And here we're getting a segment ID of, of the segment that produces the error. And, and then we print, uh, let's see the, the output here to see what, what we are printing. So here after, after Onyx loaded, uh, it, 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 at first, it, it uh, produces something to the query sync uh, channel, which is this person. Uh, this, the segment has an ID, a message, which is this. The message is create account. And the account has an ID, a balance, a, a person, which is another entity pointed by it. And the person has an email and, and a name. Then we create a, another account, and this account has the same ID, same ID as this one, with the, uh, the balance zero. Uh, and then we try to send again. Oops, no, sorry. Now here first we created the person. Now we create an account. Now we're going to create the second account. Now we expect to see uh, an error. So we, we saw that the account was uh, a duplicate. And so, so in the error uh, task, we, we, we consume an, a new message that shows uh, the account, the, the details of the account that produces the error. So we see that if we got an error, the type of the error was duplicate account. Can trace back what happened. And the body of the error is, well, it could be any string. I decided to, to put the serialization of the entity that, that produced the, the, the problem. And, and since the, the output is, we are using the, the, the atomic plugin, it's persistent in the database, so we can we can see later what, what happened. So this was create duplicate account. For deposit, it's uh, let's raise this. Okay, while it's running. So we create a person, create an account for this person. And here we, we create this list of messages to send to Onyx. So we are creating the, account, the person, the account. We are depositing 100, trying to withdraw 90. It should work. Trying to withdraw 20 more, and this should not work. And we should be able to consume the error again. And 
this is the output here. Cool. So here we sent the message to create a person, create account, deposit, withdraw, withdraw again. And then here we are logging when we are consuming the messages. So create person, create account with th those IDs, deposit, the old balance was zero, now it's 100. When we withdraw, the new balance is, now we are withdrawing 90, so the, uh, oh, you know. Yeah, no, the new, we withdrew 90, so the, the, the old balance was 100, the new balance is 10. Now we are trying to withdraw 20, the old balance is 10, the new balance would be minus 10. So here we are printing, uh, printing what the new balance would be, but uh, we don't actually persist it because it, it throws an error before. And now we get the, the error from the other channel, which is insufficient funds. And it, it specifies all the, the in incoming message that caused the error. So we have here the body. For, so for this account ID, we had this balance with, uh, with with this amount, we tried to withdraw and we got insufficient funds. So we, we can consume this and, and plug it into the atomic and persist the error per and persist the other state. We did this with, we, we saw that it was with Core Async, but if we, I, I show here, I, I don't have Kafka installed here, but uh, with Core Async, it's it's not distributed, but uh, where is it? But if you change here to a Kafka channel, we can uh, we can spin up many machines, all of them connected to the same Kafka channel, and they can be producing. So it's very easy to make this uh, distributed system. And likewise, we can consume from the same channel with multiple machines. So uh, everything that is implemented here with Core Sync, we can just replace with Kafka and it should work. Mm, yeah, I think that's all I had to show. Does anybody have doubts? So if Onyx has a web interface, yes. uh, I just want to see whether I deploy it and then, you know, is it working well? Right, they have one, uh, one other project by the same group. It's called Pyroclast. Yeah, to this. So it's not. It's technically not part of Onyx, but it's very well integrated because it's by the same people. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but yeah, it's it's made to um, able to see what's going on in streams, and you can perform queries uh, against those streams, and it will update in real time. I don't know if you can see there, but so we can uh, write the, the closure functions here. In this case, it's using frequencies, and uh, as it types, it it shows the result.
it's 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 processing the the streams in real time. I think it's pretty cool to watch this video. I recommend. And well, this is what I, I think is the closest thing to a, a web interface for Onyx. You can do filter and map in here, so we can. You can show only part of the stream, only some messages in the stream, or you can transform them and and compose those transformations. Yeah, here he gets an input, uh, split white space, zip map. Does that answer your question? Or not exactly, but. It's like, okay, this one is like an like a interface on how you define the computation. Uh, I'm more interested in, like, if I want to, let's say, debug uh, my program. In the sense of, uh, I would like to know how many messages pass through the program. And then uh, I would like to know the latency of each computation. Is a Right. Right. So this is not something uh, to define the computation. He will won't, won't get the, the output of this. He's not using this for development. He won't get the output of this this pipeline and and write the code and save and deploy it to his system. He will do this in in, in real time. So if you want to see how many messages were were sent here, you just put a function or a count or something. And you see how many messages are going through the the, the stream. Yes. Uh, if I have a cluster of machines mm -hmm. that I want to use as my uh, Onyx cluster, uh, what do I need to install on each of these nodes mm -hmm. to run it as a cluster? For example, I, I compile my code. I have my jar file. And then do I need to copy this jar file to each node in the cluster, or can I send the job from a, a separate client, one client, to run on the cluster? Uh, right. So I, I think um, my, my idea was to uh, to do the second thing that said, like uh, you create the jar and you send to multiple machines and you spin all them uh, them all up. And there's a, there's a, is there an Onyx agent sort of thing running on each each node that is expecting a jar or something similar? Uh, no, I believe that there's not uh, something like waiting for a new jar to to be deployed in a to, to be like created in a folder and then it it creates a new computation. No, okay. but if you if you have defined the the streams that you need, you can. I do these computations with Pyroclast on the fly. So if you if you want to simply analyze something like quick, uh, you you would use Pyroclast. Right? Yeah, if you yeah if it's not some something uh, just a, a quick analysis, but something like you want to create that uh, those streams permanently, you would have to update those those jars, you know, in all the machines. At least as far as I know, that's how, how it would do. If my task is like a long-running computation, mm -hmm. is it possible to do it with Onyx? Yes, you can leave the the, the process running, uh, running that 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 program, the, creating that stream. Like, wh wh why 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 do you say it? Why, why would it be possible to I do a long-running? Not using the right terminology, mm -hmm. but I'm just curious how I can. Uh, take advantage of multiple machines to run a computation. Right. So in in this case, if you're, for example, using Kafka, you would have many machines consuming from the same channel, and then it, uh, Kafka would uh, would send the message to only one of them. So you would have you would you would be able to scale horizontally. You would have many machines processing the same stream. So you're you're scaling. So how, how is this clustering working? Is it relying on something like Zookeeper, or does it have its own cluster membership protocol? 
Uh, right. So if you are comparing with Spark, for example, like uh, Spark is a much bigger project in the sense the the top layer of of Spark. So it doesn't uh, deal with the infrastructure or how to manage the machine. So if the machine dies, like Onyx won't restart the machine. It's a, a one level higher of that. So you, so yeah, using Onyx, you you have to find some other way to manage the machines. So basically, it's only limited to one machine. No, you're not limited to one machine, but you have to monitor machines and restart them with some other tool. So that's not part of Onyx. Hmm? Like what? Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what you would use for this. But Is anybody using uh, Onyx for multi-node clusters? And what do they do? Uh, yeah, so right. It's just a hobby project for people running on a laptop. I think it's not just a, a hobby project, but oh, actually I have never like deployed this in production or something. So for me, it's, a, it's like a hobby project. But if you see their web page, I think they have some cases or not. Just to answer your question, so, <coughs> so Onyx is masterless. Onyx does not have any master slave configuration. And yes, you can run Onyx on a multiple configuration. So the way um, uh, they do is something about, they call it, um, they have implemented something called snapshot-based uh, 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 mechanism. Uh, I think there's a talk by Mike Rogales who explains how they do masterless. So the idea of Onyx is masterless. So if you don't need a coordinator uh, to, to actually as compared to like two key That's the short answer to your question. To, if you run our code in a cluster, do we need to distribute the jar? The final jar which contains our workflow itself? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that, but uh, I don't know the answer. But if I'm not mistaken, there should be a way to start like an agent and waiting on a job and then send the job to the agent later on. Because Onyx is masterless and it doesn't have a, a guy who coordinates and, and orders it, so actually they, um, I think something more like a ring, the guy from the neighbor, neighbor, they coordinate with each other. That's, that's from what I know, uh, how Mike explains. So, so similar distribution can still happen in a, in a masterless way, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, is the code you used in your example, is it uh, available on GitHub or anywhere, or is it just...? Uh, no, it's not available for now. If, if you want to see, I, I, I think I can clean up a bit and upload somewhere. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's not clean, though. it's interesting <laughs> to have a look at an example. So right. If, uh, if you're happy to do so, you can link the on the meetup, that'd be awesome. But mm -hmm. you understand if it's not, uh, it's not possible. Licensing reasons or something is fine. Yeah, okay. Right. And what would be a hello world for Onyx? Because, uh, yeah, they have. I think uh, for me at least the example was quite uh, involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a series of, of, of exercises, a, a tutorial. Uh, let's see, where is it? simplest program would only tonics complement. So it could be yes. something like a log file uh, management with time based and uh, so Onyx is very strong in one of the big areas is uh, using Apache Beam's concept. So what on Onyx has done is completely married some of the Apache Beam's windowing concepts mm -hmm. to uh, to what uh, you know what uh, uh, some few years a few months ago with Kafka and all did not do. Mm -hmm. So they, they did all of these. Um, so Onyx was a project which was started as an open source. And of course, they got some funding, so they moved to distributed mesh planning. So they created PyroClass, which is a, a completely cloud-based version of Onyx. So Onyx remains as an open source project, uh, but in terms of making money and funding what I think PyroClass was the cloud-based version. So if you want to really keep the tires of Onyx, then PyroClass is a better, better solution. So pretty much if you have a use case for something like Storm or Spark, 
something that they're implementing it using modules. Uh, and also the background you were asking, uh, one of the people who works on Amit Lucas used to be part of this that he used to be part of this information. And he's moved to work on it commercially. Yeah, so in this Yeah, so in this uh, repo on the, the official organization, they have these examples. And I don't know what example would be the simplest, simple, but the most simple uh, example. But uh, yeah, this is not that simple. <laughs> but yeah, it would simple. Yeah, there is a. Yeah, so this example called aggregation, it, it actually counts words. But it doesn't mean it's the, the the most basic thing, but so it will like, split the sentence. The, the workflow is some new sentence arrives, we split into words, then after splitting we count the words and then it goes to the output. Okay, so I think that's the closest thing you get to the Spark example. So the, the operations that it will perform, uh, so for a split sentence, it will call this function to a split sentence, uh, count words its identity, because after splitting, we don't want to do anything. Uh, output will go to core async, but could be anything. Input is also core async. Uh, here it's using th those time windows. Uh, in this case, it's global, but if you change it to a, a like five minutes or something, you can see how many words in, in each interval are ar arriving. Uh, triggers, I don't really remember, I never used triggers. Uh, so the, the input in the example is these five sentences. So each input has an ID, a, a time, everything at same time zero, and a sentence. And it's uh, pushing everything to the core sync channel. And then we close the channel. Uh, this is just the configuration. Ah, they are using Zookeeper. Yeah, I don't really know how they are using Zookeeper, but I think it. It's uh, the start of the of the answer to your question. So they are using it to orchestrate the the machines. Yeah, let's see the main function here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, to simply take all the segments from core sync. And since we have already pushed them all to the, the mm -hmm. channel, it will run here. Uh, yeah, it will follow that computation graph and split the sentence here. That I missed this part. Yeah, 
yeah, we go through the, the workflow and like split sentence, count words. Count words, I think, doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, it's an identity you with a group by a key, right? Exactly. Thanks. Group by word. Yeah, I, yeah. I think this is the the example you were looking for. Not exactly, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? So in a multi-cluster, mm -hmm. like we are, let's say we have Kafka running, right? And uh, some task is given to one node, mm -hmm. and there is a failure, then how it is handled? Uh, so, you mean an unexpected error? Because like expected errors, we are iterating. So, like, how do you write it? It replicates at three places. Mm -hmm. Right, so you could have multiple machines consuming from that channel, uh, from the, the, the Kafka topic, and they could be in the same, uh, same partition, or, or it could be uh, different consumer groups, actually. So both machines would receive, would, would process the, the message. So you can have uh, uh, re redundancy in that, that sense. So we have handled. Hmm? Is your question, how is the failure handled in Onyx? Is Onyx uses Zookeeper for distributed state management. If I'm not mistaken, you submit your jobs and they uh, get stored somewhere in Zookeeper. So there is a mechanism for okay. I don't know exactly how it's And I think Pyroclast, which is the uh, like the platform as a service, track, it's actually built on Onyx. So the whole mm -hmm. Pyroclast layer is like a closure script uh, overlay on top of it. I mean, just to clarify, mm -hmm. Pyroclast is not a separate thing. It's right. Okay, more questions? Oh. Can you do <laughs> can you do a streaming word count for the next talk? <laughs> it's very interesting to see it in operation. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Okay.